Welcome to Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf X Moore, and I'm here to make sure that you're caught up to date with Rocket League news despite any global catastrophic event that may have happened because I'm just that nice of you. And on today's dock, we have more RLCS Season X action from Europe and Grid Watch. Double Tap takes a look at Garrett G. And of course, we have all the Rocket League memes in Breakout. But before we jump into all that, I gotta mention, of course, some exciting news. Rocket League is teaming up with X Games again, and that means items for you guys. You can watch the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Rocket League, to get some drops, some official X Games items, or head over to the shop, get your items there, and there's even some free ones. So click, get them before they're gone. It's gonna end January 31st, so get into the shop and get those X Games items. But we're gonna move on now. RLCS Season X continues on with the European Regional number three in Gridwatch. <laughs> The final European regional event of the Season X Winter Split has concluded, and it was a harrowing contest chock full of downfall and redemption in equal turn. The Kings of Europe have reclaimed their crown. BDS dominated the competition, finally recovering from a brief slump which had left some wondering if they'd lost their Midas touch. In an amazing bracket run, BDS left numerous high-tier teams in their wake. Not even Dignitas, who have been on the upswing lately, were safe, getting swept by BDS in a 3-0 blowout. Good loss to the back corner, Jorius already up. That is a well-timed challenge from Monkey Moon. Now they've got to start again. Violet Panda, he's made a mistake, and that'll cost him. BDS, just too much. And they have got the 3-1 lead, and they will be taking this series in a sweep. To make it into winner's finals, BDS set their sights on Oxygen Esports. The team fared better than Dignitas, but still only managed to pull off one win against the revitalized trio. And in the very first game of the match at that. Sean said again, catches it off the ramp, Farrah waits, and oh, it's still up, Farrah got the challenge. Marked by eight, can't put it on the ground. Astral gets another chance, Monkey Moon misses the bump, but gets the touch, double commit by BDS, and the ball's still in the air. Astral up again, Monkey Moon kills it off the ramp, Team BDS. The only hurdle on BDS path to success was Giants Gaming, who unexpectedly cut them off at upper finals in a tight 4-2 set. Giants, a rising talent in the European scene, outmaneuvered BDS in the latter half of the match, clinching a critical overtime and riding the momentum to victory. And now Zamway, flip reset, oh. tip down, stake with the bounce, final chance for BDS to tie this up. Itachi, a tip up, second effort, flip reset, goes for the bump, Monkey Moon powers oh, through, up. keeps it airborne. This. And Samway will hit it down to the ground. The Giants take it over BDS and move on to the Grand Final. Before they could rematch Giants in Grand Finals, BDS had to clean up Dignitas once again in lower bracket finals. Their second bout went much the same way as the first, a 4-0 sweep in BDS favor that demonstrated their power. I mean, they're trying everything here. This has been a valiant effort from Dig in the final game, but it just looks so easy for BDS to stop them. The aerial attacks are being shut down before they've even gotten started. BDS, the all-seeing eyes, Preventing all the passing plays from ever being a threat. 1-0. BDS have absolutely destroyed Dignitas in this series. To cap off the tournament, BDS went the distance against Giants. A whopping 13 game long set, which included 8 overtimes. To make matters even more impressive, every game in the match, with one exception, had a point differential of a single goal, making this undoubtedly one of the closest Rocket League sets in recent history. Again, a save for the Vodafone Giants! Just time and time again, goal line saves proving vital, leaving it to the last moment. And Monkey Moon wanting this to be his moment. The flip race is done! It'll find the back of the net! BDS break records and take their fourth regional title! With this win, BDS have taken five out of the last seven major events they've participated in. A nigh unprecedented streak. It's a certainty that the team will move on to the finals, even in the event of another temporary slump. So the question now becomes which European teams are capable of catching up to them? And now joining me, I've, I've missed him. I had to bring him back. It's your boy, Adam Lawler Thornton. Welcome, man. Uh, it's been a while. Hey, how you doing, bud? I'm doing all right. Here to talk about uh, just a couple, you know, a couple updates that Rackley's had recently. Uh, just dive in, have a little quick chat with you about it. And I'm talking specifically to Rocket Labs here. This is something that, that we had a while ago. Like we, we've, yeah. we had a, a playlist called Rocket Labs. Where we could play a bunch of cool maps Sonix had been working on. And then it disappeared on us. And there was always talks about having those kind of non-standard maps, they're called, in 
ranked play and professional play. We even saw it happen in the early seasons of RLCS, um, and then it just kind of fizzled out. But now it's back. I'm just curious your thoughts off the bat of it being back. I, did I swear you're like in my computer and watching my YouTube videos or something? <laughs> like, this is the video that's literally coming out for me tomorrow. So <laughs> it's uh, it's actually really exciting. Um, I've been talking about how obviously we need some innovation. We need something mm -hmm. to propel Rocket League to that next level. And Rocket Labs being announced back was kind of, for me personally, the biggest thing that they announced with like the free to play mm -hmm. update and everything coming with it. They're like, hey man, like we know we're going to start focusing on this again. And I think it's what's going to really catapult that casual fan base to that next step. I, th I think that's what the free to play people want, even though they would never had it. If they are new people coming over, it just, it, when you play Rocket League, like it's amazing. The physics base, like everything works so well, but yeah. having a different and unique approach on a regular basis, um, really just keeps you excited to keep coming back to the game. And it's something that I think has been missing from Rocket League for a long time. Obviously, shout out to Lethmir and what he's done with custom mm -hmm. maps as you've played a bunch of those as well. But having it easily accessible in-game, I think, is a really big deal. So this map in particular, the newest one that just dropped called Basin, um, provides a different outlet. And I think there's going to be like four factors they really look at when it comes to how they can adjust the map. Uh -huh. um, the width, the height, the length, and then the walls themselves. How they want to adjust those four variables is going to give us a lot of unique approaches. And that's mm -hmm. not including power-ups with rumble uh mutators yeah. or, or all the other different factors a different puck a cube a, like there's a lot of different things you can do with those four variables and then you incorporate the x factor stuff of you know the things i just mentioned so mm -hmm. um the fact that they've already had galleon and then also put out another new map shortly after within a couple week period um to me is really positive yeah. um the downfalls is i can't play it in training or yeah, free play I, I can't create a private lobby with it and the only thing i can think of is if they make more iterations of it it's very tough for them to hard code that and then change it and then update it and patch it because obviously you know the limitations with like sony and all that kind of stuff about uh -huh, uh -huh. how often you can do that so i do think it's a step in the right direction there has been teased in the trailer of what's coming up next which looks like a really long skinny map which looks really interesting so I'm excited for what they're doing. I hope they have a backlog. Hopefully they let their developers kind of go mm -hmm. crazy and just say, hey man, like these are your limitations, go nuts. And maybe we get some fun stuff. But um, I will say, I wish it was extended a little bit. It's for four days that they're doing it, like on weekends. Yeah. I, I wish the queue was a little bit longer than that. I think it is cool that uh, it, they're coming out as fast. You mentioned that because it, it makes me yeah. think that they do have a lot in backlog. That I if, sure hope so. Yeah. They're going to run through all these. So, uh, you know, it's funny you, you mentioned Rumble. I didn't even think of that because I had my mind set towards more of the competitive aspect. And I, I do want to bring it there yeah. because, um, you know, while the Rumble on those will be weird, wacky and fun. Uh, yeah. I think competitive is, is where obviously, you know, both both of our minds mostly lay in. Uh, oh, yeah. We saw this before, and obviously back with uh, Underpass when it was Neo Tokyo, when they had the the sides, um, is we saw it in professional play, and the teams that ended up picking those lost every single time on that. So pe <laughs> pe teams stopped picking that. It was also the it was also the worst team that picked it every single well, time. That, they're that, trying to find some sort of advantage <laughs> like again. So it makes sense. Yeah, some sort of sense. upper hand. But I, I I feel like you know there there was uh, a lot of people have said that you know like we're never going to get non-standard into uh, into competitive play into ranked. Uh, and uh, even though it was there a bit, because it wasn't released that way, we were, it was released with just the right. standard maps. And I'm wondering if you think that that is true, and that we're never going to see that, or is maybe this a sign that we might start seeing that creep in there a little bit into that competitive side? I honestly hope not, because um, okay. it would go it would go back on everything Psionics has stated. Psionics has publicly stated numerous times that they want Rocket League to become a sport. They mm -hmm. want it to be as traditional as possible. Mm -hmm. And if you start throwing in ranked with a, the separation you're talking about is when when it came out, it was a separation and a segregation of standard and non-standard. And if they would have blended those two together, it wouldn't be so bad. But mm -hmm. you have a precedent being set in the way that they approach their RLCS and every other tournament on an esports collective. So to change that up would be very weird and it would also go back on the statements they've already made it'd be almost hypocritical to an extent um i do like the lack of limitation if they just keep it for the casual aspect where they can just go crazy have fun they don't have to worry about well this one doesn't suit it the pros hate it and they get that backlash let it be fun let it be for that reason okay. to have a good time um, but i do agree man the ability like you and i have discussed this for years 
the concept of having a map pick ban phase, having pocket uh -huh. picks like the guys in Counter Strike have like cobblestone and stuff, where they're like, that's our map. And having teams where they're like, yo, we're really good at pre jumping these corner bounces in Basin. That's the map we want. I would love that. I would absolutely love to see the meta shift and talk mm -hmm. about, you know, that whole analysis that goes with it. But from what it feels like Psyonix's intent behind what they want their competitive scene to be, I don't think they would do it. It would feel really weird if they did, even if you and I on a personal level would love to talk map pick ban phase for a turn. Like, yeah. that'd be amazing. It'd be so much fun. It's such another depth that Rocket League is missing. Um, but I feel like for the intentions of what they want, mm -hmm. I don't think they'll ever blend those two. I really don't. And they'll have to leave it up to us as community members to do it with our community tournament, which I think is fine. Uh, that's all the time I got for uh, with you right now, Lawler. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll make sure to check out that Rocket Labs map that uh, <laughs> or uh, video on your YouTube that you're talking about. Hey, always appreciate it, man. Thanks for taking time. Towards the backboard, Parka is there in time. Now Violent Panda, ooh, gets the flick oh. in! Oh my goodness, when Violent Panda is doing this to you, you're gonna have a bad time. And he's looking good today. He was looking good in the last game, and oh my goodness. That had so much riding on it. Final 10, can Dink has win it in regular oh, Jesus is there! How does he do that? How is that positioning so perfect? Oh, I love it! That's all he could do on the boost. A huge what? pinch! What? Sam Way with a pinch from the ceiling! What on earth is this shot? Zamway meets the ball on the ceiling. Even when it's working for Endpoint, Oxygen just get a little bit more! Astral redirect! He can't be stopped! Hattrick! The man has taken over this game, and he finds the space in the corner of Endpoint, picks up the boost. However, that puts Tadpole stuck on the goal line. He's slow for the challenge against Virtuoso. Two solid touches for him. Oh, Ooh. what a cut from Metzenaris! Dirty! Two to one! We will see you later. Look at Virtuoso stick with this ball and beat Blue to the recovery touch. And oh. Calyx, I mean, try and close the gap as much as you like. So a better start for Dingatest, but really anything's better than the last game. Oh my goodness, Sundar Monkey Moon! has just completely styled on them. This guy is just something else, Shogun. How on earth does he read this? He read the downward bounce. Maybe another opportunity. Tadpole, he put away the last overtime. Now it's over to Calyx. He, oh! he puts it out of the way, and Calyx takes Vitality down. Calyx the scorer, but that pass was gorgeous. Bluey going for the bump in net. If Hot Shots makes you feel bad about your play, then the breakout should make you feel good about your life. Except for maybe this first one, because it's really, really cool. First up, Emrak Ripple on YouTube created a real-life Rocket League car that can flip. Now all we need is for him to get maybe one or two or three more of those so we can actually have a Rocket League match and maybe add some uh, rocket boosters to it as well. Anyways, coming up next is Metal Wolf 5280. Why are there so many numbers in people's names? Uses a 3D printer to make a Rocket League logo. And honestly, this is pretty sick. I love to see these, but I would like him to step away from the logo making and jump on making maybe an arena for MRAC Ripple for his rocket cars. You know what I'm talking about? Eh? You see where I'm getting? We need some real life Rocket League here. Come on. Moving on. A B B D Y A B. 
I said something about the numbers, but letters are they're just as worse, guys. Anyways, he made this 4K picture using Blender and Photoshop. It's a modified Dominus GT. And honestly, that's clean. You hear that? You hear that sound? That's the sound of all Dominus mains out there downloading this baby to their desktop right now. And it made me think that maybe I'd want ray tracing in Rocket League, and then I realized my frame drops. No, I'll keep it in the pictures. Our next one comes from another Reddit user. It's Mox. Guys, what's with all these extra letters and numbers? Come on. Anyways, they made a Dominus pizza box, which is kind of getting fishy here. Why is it all the Dominus mains are artists? Can we get any Fennec stuff out there? Finally, Fluntox doesn't think that these bots are taking the game too seriously. As always, the community never fails to impress us, but we have to move on now. This week in Double Tap, we take a look at the only player to go to every single world championship in the RLCS. You know, of course, I'm talking about Garrett G. In the world of esports, talented players can appear overnight and then burn out just as fast, like shooting stars streaking across the sky. But at last, seen every flash in the pan competitor are the veterans. Long-time pros who keep on grinding day after day, waiting for their shot at glory and success. One among these is Rocket League's Garrett G, a mainstay since Season 1 who captured hearts and broke records on his long road to becoming the world champion. This is his story, the story of a king eight seasons in the making. Garrett G is a player who's been around for as long as the RLCS has existed, making his debut at the very first broadcast event of the very first season an online qualifier for a spot in the Season 1 Championship. Garrett, playing for a team called Vex Gaming, placed well. 3-1, favoring Vex Gaming as we are approaching the final minute. Ball is over on the blue half. J-Rock comes up from the backfield, able to clear that one. Mosul the shot on net, but Garrett G with the block. Well done there by Garrett. Good reaction coming out from Garrett, recognizing that ball is going to get up high. And that's the thing, some of these guys are utilizing something that I am terrible at. When they jump, they jump again immediately after yeah. while boosting to give them a little oh, bit higher angle. Oh, Garrett making Man. everyone look silly. Look at that. Man, I'm glad we mentioned this guy out. And I'm glad to see him evolve as a player. He's just getting better and better. And stuff like this is absolutely why yeah. those are the things that you need to practice mechanically. Training mode does pay off. In between their win and the finals proper, Garrett and co. had already changed banners twice. Vex's roster had been acquired by Enix and then Exodus in rapid succession. While Exodus didn't make it any further than the semifinals, it was still an important formative experience for the young Garrett G. And it probably helped that the one win he did get was against future legend Turbo Pulsa. They got 15 seconds left to see if they can put the pressure on. They had a great pass there from Pashi, but Siki's shot went just a little bit wide. Now Turbo sends it towards the middle over to Pashi. He's going to try and get this one through, but Garrett beats him too at final second. They're going to have to make a full court carry if they want to make this happen. Siki to Pashi. They're up on the air. Turbo up again. Now Pashi going to try and push this one over, but Turtle's going to try and shut this one down. Garrett sends it into the far corner, and 3 0 is our series for Exodus. Exodus able to take down Maka in a 3-0 victory, which has to feel fantastic for them. I know Maka's going to feel a little defeated. They are a very, very competitive team, but again, it's not over for them. Season 2 was a bit of a disaster for the fledgling pro. Now under Orbit Esports, Garrett G unfortunately finished the championship dead last, flunking out of the LAN 0-2. This was the beginning of a new era for Garrett, however, as shortly afterwards, he departed Orbit and was brought on board NRG, the team he still plays with to this day. Garrett thrived under NRG, managing to claim the title of North America's top team in seasons 3, 6, and 7, and even helping NRG make it all the way to the grand finals of the season 5 championship, just barely losing in a heartbreaking seesaw match that went down to the final game. Ladies and gentlemen, my voice is gone, but my spirit is high. We have overtime. Kadok takes control. Wants to go the long way. Next goal is the RLCS World Championship. Turbo Pulse with it up high. Gets the flick. Turbo! Despite never claiming the crown for himself, Garrett remained persistent, refusing to give up until he could hoist that trophy himself. By the time Season 8 rolled around, Garrett had achieved the distinction of being the only player to make it to the World Championship land every single time without fail. He had also found an unlikely ally in the form of rival-turned-roommate Turbo Pulsa, who had been acquired by NRG in the first ever EU to NA roster shakeup. 
This powerful combo proved its worth when NRG found itself in the Grand Finals once again, a single set away from that trophy Garrett so craved. Their opponents? The defending world champs Vitality, whose star player was KDOP, Turbo's former teammate and fellow multi-RLCS winner. They need a quality clear. Garrett had to turn it. back from that midfield boost as well. They'll just be happy to be out. Any sort of mistake there was going to be it. There was going to be no way to recover. That's a huge demo oh. for Garrett! Garrett G! At the midfield, lobbing it over Scrum, the chip shot! A tight match gave way to overtime in the last possible game. Both teams fought hard, but in the end... Very big. He's got past two players. Looks for a bump. Garrett G clears look. Justin! After three years and eight seasons, the veteran player finally got the victory he had been working so hard to achieve since day one. His road to that moment was long and arduous, but to Garrett G, that just made the moment all the more sweet. I feel like some people out there tend to overlook Garrett G sometimes. I know we don't on the broadcast, but I know some out there do because look at his teammate Squishy and Justin. You got some flashy players around. but. The fact that Garrett G has gotten all these accomplishments just proves that it's a mistake to overlook him. Honestly, that's why everyone was so excited about them winning season eight. You even saw Scrub Killer after Vitality lost to them at that Worlds in Madrid, that they were kind of like, okay with the loss. Not fully, but like, okay, it's Garrett G finally winning a Worlds. I think there was nothing but the entire community could do except be happy. It was a fantastic moment. I'm going to start crying, so we got to move on. That's all the time we have for today. But you can check out more of our content on YouTube and, of course, on Twitter at WatchRLC. That's all we have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And to send you out, here is your weekly backfire.